For those quietly battling porn addiction, the fight can be brutal. Multiple relapses over the years, the guilt, betrayal of loved ones, the ED, erectile dysfunction, the jump into acting out in real life, it's a rough journey. Sometimes it's easier to deal with everything by unconsciously telling ourselves lies. And these lies grow and over time turn out to be the greatest hindrance to our progress. Now this video will help you identify the most common lies we tell ourselves about our porn use. The first is what I call the powerless lie. It goes along the lines of, I can't stop watching porn or I can't quit. You don't have the power to do so. This is a lie and a red flag for low self-esteem. Most frequently told when you feel that you are completely powerless to control your addiction. You can quit. You're more powerful than you imagine. Perhaps you grew up with some rough experiences that knocked you down on a few notches. You can still rise. Willpower is a muscle. Now it gets tired, but it will get you far enough to see the mountaintop in this tough climb. Once you've had a glimpse at freedom, you will do whatever it takes to get there. There's a saying that goes, a belief is not an idea held by the mind, it's an idea that holds the mind. The second lie is the downplaying lie. It was something like, I, I must have recovered. Now, this is one of the biggest obstacles in my porn addiction journey. I would quit porn and masturbation for a few weeks and feel amazing, then the thoughts would begin to slowly creep in. Well, I haven't had the urge in so long, so I must be fine. You know, or, oh, thank God it's not an addiction. Well, guess what downplaying it led to? That's right, I fell right back into the porn and masturbation cycle. Another variation of this lie occurs when you quit watching porn, but then try to masturbate. To your surprise, you find that it's almost impossible to do so without watching pornography. So back to porn again. Both are lies we tell ourselves to rationalize the addiction. The third is what I call the whitewashing lie. Like I was drunk, I was high, it was right there. And in my college days, excessive drinking and smoking was, was a one-way ticket to the masturbation station. No matter how much I wanted to quit, putting myself under the influence of something else invariably led to a relapse. So for those trying to give up pornography, the effects of alcohol and drugs on the process of quitting cannot be emphasized enough. Once your inhibitions are lowered or certain senses are chemically heightened, the last vestiges of restraint just fly out the window. The fourth lie is the minimizing lie, like uh, just five minutes, um, I'll only look at this anime porn on Tumblr for five minutes. Two hours later, at 30 chrome tabs later, you're exhausted and disgusted from your porn binge. The time trap always escalates. You play down and attempt to minimize the actual amount of time you know you will spend on pornography. The fifth is the inflation lie. Like, I'm stressed, I feel like crap, it's been a crazy, stressful day, so screw it, I, I just need this. It's another common lie where you inflate a rough situation into an excuse to binge on pornography. You haven't developed alternate means of coping with stress, so when you experience above average stress, you automatically return to the thing that soothes you the most. The solution to this is to work on developing positive habits that you can turn to the moment your triggers kick in. Uh, one of the things that has worked very well for me is meditation. The sixth lie is the implication lie. So for instance, my, my significant other isn't into what I want, my girlfriend doesn't give blowjobs and she doesn't do anal. Well, I use that one too and it nearly cost me my relationship. It's easy to blame or implicate someone for your porn habits. An easy but weak lie. It's also one of the top lies we tell ourselves before, during, and after we act out our porn fantasies in real life. So, in my program, Porn Reboot, I emphasize that taking responsibility is among the first steps to giving up pornography. Seven is the privilege lie. So, for instance, I'm a late bloomer, or I'm a late bloomer and I missed out, or I got married early and that's why I'm acting out. Now, I feel like I've used almost all the lies I've mentioned so far. I've noticed that this lie is most common among guys who are like single. Men who gain success later on in life 
develop confidence and improved self-esteem through self-improvement or career success. Um, those kind of men tend to develop a sense of entitlement when justifying their porn or sex addiction. If your habit of having sex with women outside of your relationship is fueled by pornography, it's time to start cutting back. So the next is what I call the standard lie. So for instance, a guy says like, you know, every guy does it, um, or it's biology. Now, I've been guilty of this lie as well. While the statement is true, painting the picture of pornography as a normal standard part of a man's lifestyle uh, as an excuse for porn addiction constitutes lying to yourself. Not every man watches pornography and masturbates on a daily basis. In fact, some of the most accomplished men in history stayed far away from pornography. Nine is the non-acceptance lie, which is, I don't watch pornography anymore, and I used this for so long. My rationalization was that spending the same amount of time that I used to spend on porn browsing Instagram for hot chicks and bikinis was obviously not watching pornography. Listen, the reboot process is sabotaged the moment you replace your addiction to porn with something else. It's the equivalent of someone addicted to cigarettes trying to quit by switching to e-cigarettes. It doesn't work. Quitting pornography by rebooting involves completely avoiding and isolating yourself from any habits that may potentially lead to a trigger. The final one is what I call the negating lie. Now, it goes like, there's nothing wrong with pornography or, or playing out my addiction in real life, okay? If you say this, but well, one day you're attracted to women and the next you've had sex with more sex workers or prostitutes from Backpage than actual women, then you're lying to yourself. Porn use escalates as our brain craves more stimulation. Negating the effects of pornography is the singularly most devastating lie that you can tell yourself. So, I'm curious, I'd like to know, what are some of the lies that I didn't include here that you frequently tell yourself? I'd love to know. Leave them in the comments below.